Welcome to The Fallen State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. My guest today would like to see more black millennials voting and getting into politics. I have with me Kenyon Parham, a political strategist and think tank founder. She called herself Wonder Woman with the Melanin Quotient. What is that? Well, first of all, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. I guess, um, yeah, Wonder Woman with the Melanin Quotient, my mother, raised me to be um, a Renaissance girl. <clears throat> she wanted me to be a Jane of all trades and you know, always told me, no, you're Wonder Woman, you can do whatever you'd like to do. Except for the fact that when I finally looked up what Wonder Woman looked like, she didn't look like me. So <laughs> I said, well, then I'll be Wonder Woman with a melanin quotient. Um, I, I, really, I looked at your website a little bit and read a little bit about you. You're a very interesting person. Thank you. What should people know about millennials today? I think everybody needs to understand that millennials are extremely multifaceted, uh, strategic, inquisitive, um, inventive. You know, we won't take no for an answer <laughs> the first, second, or third time. Amazing. Um, and, I, and I think that um, folks are really starting to learn, you know, who we are as a generation and how really different we are from the top to the bottom. You know, I think that there are characteristics that some Millennials that are on the younger side of things hold that older millennials don't. Millennials age uh, range between 13, I mean, is it it's 18, 18, 18 to 35? 18 and 36. 36, yeah. oh, mm -hmm. okay. 18, 36. 36. 1980 is when it cuts off. I also read that you raised $15 million in funds. Uh -huh. uh, what type of causes do you raise money for? Yeah, so we're, we're upwards of that now, and I'm really proud of that. Throughout my career, um, over the last decade, I've had the privilege of being able to work with um, a lot of political and civic oriented entities as well as nonprofit entities. And right. um, I didn't set out to do this at first because, you know, when you're first getting into the game and you're an entrepreneur and you know, you'll kind of take the clients that you'll get right yeah. to prove and to prove yourself and to, you know, kind of roll up your sleeves and, and get some W's under your belt. And that's what I did. I didn't recognize until a couple of years later when I looked back, the silver lining was, you know, social justice oriented organizations, organizations that um, are adamant about their support for children, for marginalized and vulnerable communities, for women. Um, and that, that, you know, I think what has been to much of my success politically um, and in business um, is that the same principles that you apply to political fundraising, the same things that motivate people to go to the ballot box right. are the same things that, the same principles that can be applied in the nonprofit world and that social justice oriented nonprofit organizations can benefit from political strategy. When I read that, I thought that was so amazing. You're so young and yet raised that amount of money already. Thank you. That's really you know, bad. I didn't recognize what it meant to be from Los Angeles and be in fundraising. We have so much access to capital and um, politics and m the way that money flows in politics plays such a huge um, part in um, our, the quality of our lives and our access to resources and in how, um, uh, what makes LA, LA. Are you liberal or conservative? I'm liberal. You're liberal. Proudly. And what is a liberal, for, for, especially for a millennial? What is define liberal? You know, well, so I, I'd rather, if we're going to attach titles, I'd rather attach progressive, right? Okay. Um, versus liberal. Um, you know, I am a woman, I'm a black woman, and my opinions, I cannot detach how I self-identify and how the world identifies me from the way that I feel politically. Um, as a strategist though, I've had to divorce my personal beliefs from yeah. you know, working with candidates and clients um, who may not fall in the same you know, end of the spectrum as myself. Um, but I'd like to think that that means that you know, I'm deeply concerned about um, the welfare of people, yeah. about our quality of life, about our access to um, education, to be able to um, fulfill the rights entitled to us uh, by the promise that this nation made. Um, to people who look like me and people who don't look like me. Is there a difference between a progressive and a liberal? Um, I think that you can find nuances, you know, and I think that that's also depends on people's, you know, personal identifications. Right. Um, I think that, you know, what we're learning more and more in this political process is that the more we try to pigeonhole people into, 
you know, specific labels, the more folks want to break out from it. I think we're in a time where now folks are less concerned about titles and more concerned about the issues. And, um, you know, I think that we're going to have some trouble in the next couple of years really trying to identify folks. Um, yeah. And it, it will really be very clear what people stand for. Either you're for the welfare, social consciousness, for either you're for equity and access, or you're not. I noticed that a lot of my friends who were liberals mm -hmm. are now calling themselves progressive. Mm -hmm. And I remember when l the word liberal became so negative. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, mm -hmm. I think it became embarrassing to them. So they mm -hmm. started to call themselves progressive, but yet they have the same mentality and they do the same thing. The, the name changed, but the pe my friends didn't change. Well, you know, I, th I think, um, <clears throat> I think it's important to be able to, you know, switch the labels and the self-identifiers um, as we so please, particularly as their meanings change in um, mainstream media. And I think what's important about that is not necessarily um, the fact that media says all, but if we look at the entities that control the narratives, if how I've self-identified is now being largely identified in, as, in a culture right. as something that's different than how I identify, then it behooves me to find an application of that definition that best fits me. There's a lot of talk about the voter ID laws. Yes. And we heard a lot about it in this last election. Yeah. And um, what do you think about the voter ID laws? Is there a problem with them? Oh, absolutely. It's and abysmal. The, it's, it's what? It's abysmal. Um, and it's amazing to me that to have come so far to be very quickly headed back to where we came from is um, terrifying. When you say headed back, what do you mean? So, you know, I, I mean, you know, to go from, uh, you know, the Voting Rights Act uh, in yeah. the 60s, you know, I have a sister, my older sister was born uh, around that time, she, she'd hate me if I exposed her <laughs> real age, but she was born around that time, long enough to, you know, around, around then to tell me, you know, what it was like to grow up when it, legislation like that was implemented. My parents, the same thing, to now think that in my lifetime, you know, we're still fighting some of those same battles. You know, I think that it's cowardly um, for, um, you know, Republican state houses and, and all of them, all, all state houses who have enacted voter ID um, laws uh, since 2014 have been all Republican state houses. Right. And I think that it's cowardly for them to preach on one hand and feel so confident that their message resonates with black and brown communities, with marginalized communities, and then enact legislation that further suppresses their ability to align with the people who they feel, say that they feel so confident in aligning with. I think that um, anytime you limit access and equity, particularly in the, in the United States of America, I think um, <laughs> you, you've got to have you know, a, a moral yeah. conversation with yourself. Uh, if I'm thinking about this correctly, voter ID laws mean that you have to show an ID in order to vote, right? Yes. Um, I don't understand what, what's the problem with that. What's wrong with have because we have so many illegals here now, mm -hmm. we have people coming into the countries who are country who are not citizens. What's wrong with and especially with black people, what's the problem with showing an ID in order to vote? How is that hurting them? So I don't have an issue with needing to verify your identification, but I would just like it to be consistent um, across Meaning the what? board. Meaning, Meaning what? um, you know, there are certain uh, states, uh, I believe North Carolina was one of them, where at Texas, Louisiana, I can continue going on, um, where they have enacted laws where only certain specific um, uh, pieces of identification are allowed and will be you know, verified. So um, a state issue ID uh, will not be, but a passport will be. Um, a student ID card from the university that you attend will not be. Is it difficult for college kids to get a state issued ID? Um, it is not, it is, I, I mean, I think difficult, you have to get into a gray area, <laughs> right? Like difficult. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> is, it, is, it, is, it, is it easily accessed? Probably not as simple. I know what it's like to be a person who owns her own business and has to go to the DMV 
in Los Angeles, and I know I don't go to the DMV, I know I go to AAA. <laughs> right, <laughs> I know? go there too. You know, AAA. and you go to AAA for a reason, right? Yeah. Um, because but the DMV and in our, in our, in, in some of those social services, yeah. you know, it's difficult for us to get the kind of service that we need that follow, falls in line with the things that we have to do during the day. What my point of, about voter ID, what makes it so abysmal is that it's like, it's like playing a game with equity and access to our rights. Voting is a right. Um, so to create all of these different you know, checks to me um, when addresses and identi identity can be easily verified to me is just silly. Um, I've noticed, and I don't know if you're a Democrat or Republican, I have to assume a Democrat say you're a liberal, right? You tend to vote Democrat. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that it's the Democrats who are always complaining about the ID, uh, voting ID mm -hmm. issue. And yeah, it's the Democrats' ID uh, laws, but it's the Democrats who tend to get caught voting two and three times in different states or voting for dead people or voting for um who uh uh voting for crazy folks um but, but I, I've, I've never heard of those cases yeah Could you ohio tell me? i believe one state that found a, a woman or caught some woman black woman who had voted like two or three different times in different states oh okay yeah yeah and, i don't uh, know i i haven't um i haven't heard about that but yeah. the last couple cases of um Voter, voter fraud that I did hear about that had to do with IDs and being registered in multiple cases yeah. were from four people within Trump's cabinet. So I don't, I haven't heard about any Democrats. Yeah. Though. Do you, uh, you personally believe that a person should have to show an ID in order to vote or should they be able to just walk in there and vote? I, th I think that people, that, that you should have to verify your identity. And um, how but would I you think, do that? I think, that, I think that that's a, that's a, um, uh, a tough question because different states have different requirements for identification that they accept. I, I just don't think that government IDs should be, uh, you know, told, I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought. Yeah, relax, you want some um, water? Yeah, Thank this, you. That's one beauty of <laughs> I don't think, uh, okay, here we go. I, I, don't, I don't think that government ID should be uh, disqualified. You know, I don't, I don't think that we should try to find alternative forms of identification when we have some already that are in place. Yeah. And, and furthermore, you know, I, I don't think that there should be made, that there should be any changes to voter identification um, and, the, and the system thereof, because if you look at the numbers and the statistics and the occasions, um, uh, where there have been voter fraud or voter issues, it has not been because people walked up and tried to uh, vote illegally. In fact, I think there were two cases during the campaign cycle in Texas, uh, both of um, Republicans, registered Republicans, who did go in person and got arrested for trying to vote twice. So, there, I, yeah. There is um, one thing that I think is, is a negative image of black Americans, and I hear it in the media a lot, mm -hmm. Uh, especially during voting season, they say that black people should not have to show a, an ID in order to vote. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, because some blacks, they can't get down to the DMV or they can't do this or that. And it makes black people seem dumb and kind of lazy and out of it to take away that responsibility. And I don't like that because, you know, blacks are smart. They can take care of business. Um, in Georgia, they would even, I believe it's Georgia, they would even go to your house and, and register you for an ID. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that image that they put out there about blacks when it comes to voting? Oh. The ID, a uh, voting ID, voters ID. <laughs> right. Uh, well, firstly, you know, I want to be very careful when talking about issues of equity, equity and access that we don't um, attribute false narratives to um, uh, to that, you know, I, I think that is, is it true that marginalized and disenfranchised communities have difficulty adjusting their already tight schedules with all of their responsibilities to, um, you know, add another thing to their day to go and, you know, wait in line at a social service, you know, uh, place but in like this the case, DMV. Some cases um, they'll come to you. Uh, if they can come to them, I think that that's a great thing. Right. Um, uh, but I think, uh, but I think that that we need to be careful in attributing things. Like I, I don't, I don't 
when I hear narratives like you said, I don't attribute those to what I know to be black America. That's well, not the black America. You know, you hear the NAACP and others mm -hmm. talking about black folks and that we shouldn't have to require them to go out and get an ID in order to vote. And so in some states, they made it easier so that the folks can go to you and register you to get an ID, and yet they didn't seem to like that. Are you embarrassed that blacks are presented in that way? I'm not embarrassed because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not embarrassed, not embarrassed by that. I think that's, do I reject narratives that I feel like do not uh, accurately depict um, my people? Yes. Yeah. I do reject those narratives. But are you, I, no, uh -huh. no, go ahead. But, but I don't, um, you know, I, I think that when I hear the NAACP coming out and talking against people having to go get an additional ID, what I think they're specifically talking about are signing up for an actual ID card that is just for voting that right. they've created in some of these states as, again, another check, you know, or a failed check um, to verify people's identity, identity. And if you don't sign up in time before the election to get this specific voter card, then you're unable to vote. And that's what I was saying where I feel like if you already have government issued ID, um, that should be just as fine to verify who you are instead of having to go a third or fourth step. To are, you, are you a Christian? Uh, I am. Mm -hmm. You're a Christian. Do you think illegal aliens in this country should have the right or be able to vote? I think if they are contributing um, taxpaying citizens, um, I think that they should have an opportunity to participate um, in civic life and be civically engaged. I think that there should be a pathway to, um, you know, and, and, you know, of course, the nuances of all, of all that you have to kind of work out. But I do think that any contributing member of a society um, should have the opportunity to participate in said society. And so you, if I'm hearing you correctly, you believe that an illegal alien uh, should, who is a non-citizen, and they brought the law to get here, they should have the right to vote. Are you saying that, just to be clear? I'm saying through, I, I think that, um, firstly, I'd like to scratch that question. Like, I'm not really comfortable with that question, but just to understand what, what you're asking for, is that something we can do? Can we scratch that? Yeah, Kelly. Can we scratch that question? What do you mean, that scratch wasn't, it? That wasn't on like the list of questions that you guys sent. Well, it's about voting ID laws. But you're asking me if, illegal, if an illegal alien should right. have the right to vote? Yeah. Hey, why don't we just move on? Yeah, I, I don't really want to answer that question. You don't want to answer that? Mm-mm. And why not? <laughs> I mean, I'm... Um, give a justification and she'd like to move on to the next question? Uh, I mean, when Kelly I, and I went over before this... Kind of is, is that a bad question? It's something? not a bad question, but yeah. I think it's complicated and I think that, I mean, it... You know, can we not? Can we just move on to the next question? Is that possible? Uh, um, okay, you don't have to answer. You want you definitely. Okay. Uh, let's see. I just lost my stuff here. I hit the wrong. So you don't want to answer that, huh? Well, because here's the thing, right? Like, I obviously believe in a pathway to citizenship. I think that. Um, right, and I know, understand it's a different question. I understand that. About I think the, the way that you're asking the question, though, is what frames is what frames it odd for me. Do I believe an illegal alien should have the right to vote? Right. Um, not why they not while they're an illegal alien, but I think that. Actually, you answered the question already. So. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, I just don't. I don't think that. Um, you know, I think that contributing members of society should find a way to participate in civic life. One of the things that I talk about all the time is that civic engagement, being civically engaged, yeah. does not mean that you just participate at the voting bo box, in the, in the ballot box. And I think that um, there's opportunities for those who are undocumented um, in our community to participate and be civically engaged and be counted um, while they are on their pathway to citizenship where they can you know, legally uh, participate um, at the ballot box. Okay. I do want to say any question that you don't, you have a right not to answer a question. So mm -hmm. you're not like under, you're not going to jail. No, I'm clear. If, if you don't answer. Um, I saw a video of you on TD Jakes' mm -hmm. show that's on the Oprah Network. Mm -hmm. and, it, uh, um, and this was right after the presidential uh, election. Mm -hmm. And you said, and I want to be correct in the quote, you said you didn't like the phrase 
taking America back. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that to me? What do you mean by that? Yeah, because that, that phrase confuses me. Well, I, I want to know. I want to know who they're taking when when it is said. When I have heard it said, let me qualify. Right. Let me qualify the the quote. When I have heard, let's take America back again. I heard it most uh, pervasively uh, during the 2016 election cycle um, from uh, Trump supporters uh, at Trump rallies um, and rallies of the alt right. Right. And so when I hear that, it's confusing to me. As a black woman who knows her history, I'm confused by that. You want to take America back. I don't really know what that means because uh, my understanding of history and I think their understanding of history might be a little bit different. When, have you ever asked anyone who said that or used that phrase, what do you mean take America back? I have, I have. Uh, and what uh -huh. do they say? What type of response have you got? Normally I get you know, some, some uh, runarounds. Uh, it normally has to do with you know, uh, big government, right? Uh, bringing bringing government back to the people, um, you know, which as a strategist I know to be buzzwords. I mean, those are the kinds of sayings that my colleagues and I sit up in our offices <laughs> and create, and folks end up putting on posters and yeah. t-shirts. Um, but but what I know is I identify those to be you know dog whistle sayings. Um, you know, that mean different things to different people. And so as a woman of color, it's a trigger for me to hear things like, you want to take America back. Um, and I think it's like what that What does for, it mean to you when you hear it as a black woman? As a black woman, I think, you know, there's some serious undertones, some serious nationalistic undertones, some serious supremacist undertones um, in comments like that, uh, taking America back from whom? Um, and I think that 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 statement can't be disconnected from the fact that we've just left the first tenure of our nation's first black president um, and a president who was not just um, ethnically black or African American, but who also had a heart for uh, marginalized and disenfranchised communities and acted those out in his policies. And so um, I think that there's a that there's also an assumption that um, the power shifted, the pendulum shifted a little too far away from the comfort of folks who saw themselves as always being in power in this country. Do you feel the same way when you hear the phrase, making America great again? You get the same weird feeling? I do. You do. Mm -hmm. um, but not so much because that's not an original saying. You know, oh, okay. the first time we heard that saying was with Reagan. <laughs> Right. All they did was add an again onto it. Oh, okay. So I'm not, that's You're not more as... more comfortable with that than <laughs> take America It's a back. little interesting. I mean, to me, it looks like a resurgence of a, of, of a, of a Republican regime All or right. the, the, the trying, trying to put up um, the facade of bringing back, you know, good old Republican days um, versus the saying of let's take America back. When I hear it and when I say it, I'm saying take America back from the liberals you know, mm -hmm. uh, take America back, because liberals tend to destroy. They don't build, they destroy, meaning that high taxes, restrictions, open borders, weak military, uh, the destruction of the family. Tell me how you really feel about it. Where, <laughs> whereas uh, conservatives, when they say take America back or make mm -hmm. it great again, they're referring to that. It doesn't mean you go know, back I think to I could slavery. Go with that. I think I could go with that okay. if, if I hadn't heard um, and been in the space where yellings of take America back is immediately fo you know, followed um, or immediately uh, those sayings come right after hearing comments about immigration, um, hearing comments uh, that, uh, that are Islamoph Islamophobic. Um, if, I hadn't, if I hadn't personally witnessed the connection of those two, right. I might be able to drop the melanin off of it and the ethnicity off of it and not take it. Um, when you hear me say it now, does it make sense what they mean when they say it? It never did not make sense to me. I, I mean, do you I, agree I with English, it now? I when what you it heard means. me say it right now, do you agree with me? Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I see, well, well I don't, I don't sense, think that liberals destroy, I like so I, I don't think we would look at it the same way. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I don't think that we destroy, um, but I, I can understand where somebody who agrees with that sentiment could line up that. When you hear black conservatives say, mm -hmm. taking America back, mm -hmm. are you feeling weird when you hear them say it? Or do you think it means something other than what it means when you hear black people say that? Again, you know, I think that 
I don't necessarily connect skin color with consciousness. Okay. So that's the first thing. So whether you're white, black, blue, brown, or purple, and something comes out your mouth, um, I, it's not who you are that's saying it. I think, I think it's the embodiment of what you're saying and mm -hmm. the implications and who, it, who what you're saying would affect the most. Oh, um, so if I see anybody of any color say something that I know is going to have a drastic effect implications on people who look like me and you uh, and those others you know in this room then I think that's how you judge um, you know the heart of a saying of an intention of a policy it, it's not it's less about who is saying it and more about what is who does it affect what do you think of uh, President Trump's administration so far the job that he's doing so far what, should, what do you think of it I, I just think I, I think he's I think it's terrifying. Terrifying. Um, I do. I think it's In terrifying because you know, firstly, our government isn't isn't being run, um, isn't staffed up even uh, the way that it should be. Um, you know, I Are get you terrified by that. That is not um, staffed I just, up. I just think that um, I think that there's a lot of smoke and mirrors, and I think that that something really big and dangerous happened in the 2016 election cycle. And um, outside of the dangerous narratives, outside of um, you know, you know, kind of the hate and the sentiments and the anger um, that was fueled during the cycle, outside of um, voter disenfranchisement, outside of all of that, <clears throat> I think that we are at a very critical time in our nation's history right now to think about what it means to have full faith and confidence in our American institutions. Now, President Trump didn't have anything to do with voter ID laws or any other, you know, the attacks that no, happened. No, but, but listen, whenever you ask me about he, it, you know, he wasn't a president yet. And, and so why don't you trust him that he would do what's good and best for the country? Because, because he hasn't done anything to prove that he not going to do the right And he thing. also hasn't done anything to earn the job report numbers that he takes claim for, right? He hasn't done that either, but he still takes claim for them. Um, I think w where I, where I ha take issue, um, <laughs> where I take issue is that I understand as, as somebody who works in politics where power lies. Um, I know what it means to be a staffer. I know what it means. Um, you know, that's to be why a I was so happy to talk to you today. I looked at your video. I'm like, wow, we're going to get some answers today. I know what it so means to be a consultant. So, give I, me what, an why I say that, why something I say, that you're terrified by. I, I, I am ter I'm terrified by it because I, because I know. Like what, for that? Give me something specific. I am terrified that President Trump I'm, will. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's not him, again, I'm not going to give him that much power. It's not him, he the man, who terrifies me. I think what terrifies me is um, looking at uh, the values, the lack of experience, um, the lack of governance experience. Well, Barack um, Obama didn't have any experience at all. But, his, but he had a, a squad. First of all, he did have governance experience. I mean, he had been uh, he, senator he from have, Illinois for a day or two, but other than that, he had none. <laughs> He if was you a community his, organizer, his, and we gave him a chance. Uh, were you terrified governance. with him because he lacked experience? He also knew who to team up with in, in order, who had governance experience that was far outstretched, you know, his actual legislative experience, which he did have. You know, and I think that there's something to be said about people who are community organizers. I started off as a community organizer, working in, on the field, uh, but you give know, me an example of something that you're t terrified of. I still okay. don't, so, uh, I don't see, I don't know what that is yet. I really would like to know. Sure. So uh, one thing that terrifies me um, are the uh, seemingly um, rushed um, desire to put out uh, policies that are um, incomplete, uh, un unconstitutional, um, all for the guise of making it seem like he's getting things done. Um, give me to an me, example, that is one the policy. travel ban. The travel, travel ban. ban. Rushed, extremely rushed. The rollout of it was absolutely um, uncoordinated. Um, a state agencies had no idea what was going on. Intergovernmental agencies had no idea what was going on. There was no counter. There was no press release. There was no. I mean, there was nothing. I see. Um, so, just to be for my understanding, is that 
he put out a travel ban on seven Muslim countries where terrorists seem to come from, and there's no uh, vetting of what these people. What tells us the terrorists so, come from so there, though? I just want to ask this, where, you know, there's no vetting of these people, so he put a temporary ban on, on, the, on travel from those countries. Are you saying you were terrified because he did it so fast? No, I'm terrified are you because support, it's misinformed. So are you in support of him doing that, though? Should he put a ban, a temporary ban on those countries? No. You don't want one at all? Nope. Uh, and why not? Because terrorists don't come from there. If I look at the last cases of domestic terrorism, they look like white males in, in um, America. Like who? If what? I look like Dylan Roof. <laughs> like Dylan Roof, you know, killing uh, nine folks uh, in a Bible study in South Charleston and you're able to walk out of the building with a bulletproof vest on and they stop you at Burger King before they take you in. I mean, to me, that's amazing like that we can even have a conversation about travel bans uh, when domestic terrorism still runs rampant. How um, about, and then uh, it, additionally, let me, finish my, let me finish my point. You know, secondly, um, none of the, if we, if we look at when the world really changed, when the culture really changed around terrorism and when terrorism became a buzzword, we're talking about 9-11, right? Fair? Right, yes. Okay. If we look at where the hijackers from 9-11 came from, none of them came from any of the seven countries. Which so, country would you want him to put, you would feel better about him I would not feel better about any kind of any travel ban. No matter because, where. No, because and I don't. why is that? Because I don't think that that's, I don't, I'm, I, I'm, I'm confident that that is not how you address an issue uh, around um, uh, uh, terrorism you know, that, that, is a, that is a piece of legislation that reeks of um, some of our nation's most not proud moments. Let me ask, uh, we had a, to me that is terrifying. There was a, uh, some years ago now, there was a beheading in Oklahoma mm -hmm. at the workplace. This Muslim guy cut off this woman's head mm -hmm. and, and while cutting it off, he was shouting Allahu Akbar. Mm -hmm. He attempted to cut off another woman's head, but fortunately they killed him before he was able to do it. At the military base in Texas, shooting, the guy shouted Allah, it was a Muslim, uh, San Bernardino. And just time and time again, do, why don't you believe or uh, support Obama, I mean, President Trump in putting a ban on this, temporary ban until we can clean it up, see what's going on, and then do it in a different way? Why aren't you in support of that? I'm in support of that because, you know, the entire time that I was raised to be a Christian woman and a Christian black woman, right. I never saw Christianity banned for the acts of people like Timothy McVeigh, for the acts of people like Din Dylan Roof, uh, and, and countless others. You know, but for most of the terrorist attacks, are, if not all, most of them are Muslim. You don't see Christians doing that. But I think you need to redefine what terrorism is, sir. Uh, what is terrorism? Cut it off a person's head. Is that, and, your, is and, that uh, your barometer for terrorism? Um, killing up a group of soldiers and other people shouting Allah Hu Akbar. Not all of, most of the terrorism is not Muslim. Yes, they are. I disagree. Wait, can you give we'll me an example of them not being? I've, I've, I've listed I several mean, but in this You gave me, but those were not terrorist acts. Give me uh, real, the bombing, real deal. Bombing a daycare center of children is not a terrorist act? And how often do we have something like that coming happening from Christians? Okay, so I'm going to encourage you and your readers to, you know, do some research on the filed insta uh, instances of domestic terrorism in the United States, uh, and you'll find that you know the majority of them are not from committed by people who are of Muslim faith. Let me ask. Um, I've done a lot of work in the uh, black communities around the country, inner cities, and it's been a, a big deal in that a lot of black men and women cannot get jobs, day labor, especially those who are uneducated, are not educated. Mm -hmm. And the illegals are coming in, they're taking over the jobs. They are- uh, Whose uh, jobs? Uh, black Americans in the urban areas. Okay. Uh, they are overcrowding the schools in those districts or in those areas. Uh, gang members are coming across the borders and they are running blacks out. They're supported by uh, drug lords and they are running the blacks out of their own communities. President Obama did not put a wall around the borders. He didn't do anything to protect the people. President Trump has made a promise to do that. They're already working on it. As a matter of fact, illegal aliens coming across the borders have gone down 40% already. He's only been there, uh, what, since January, whatever. Um, are you, 
is that a good idea to put the wall around the borders to protect blacks in that area, in those areas? No, and, and furthermore, your question is interesting. Um, it's oddly phrased because, uh, you know, to answer a question about whether it's a, it's a good idea to protect citizens, uh, I would still say, no, I don't think we need uh, You don't believe border. in protecting your, your home? I do, but I don't think in 2017 that building a, a, a wall, there is no wall we could build large enough to span the entire stretch of area that we would need to cover. And the amount of money that it would take, taxpayer dollars that it would take, uh, to, to block us in, to wall us in, I'd much rather see go to um, you know, funding public education for our kids uh, and, and to, to protect and ensure the viability and the thrival of a community that you're asking me to protect right. by building a wall. I'd much rather see those dollars go so to So does places. it bother you to know that the illegal aliens are affected? Our country over, over large, but uh, especially blacks the most, first and foremost, when you hear this, does that bother you? Like, wow, I didn't know that. It bothers me to hear that any American is affected. How about and, black and, Americans? And particularly black Americans. However, so, I do not feel like the, the answer to solving the issues of relationship problems uh, and, 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 and dis domestic disputes uh, between the undocumented community and the black community would be to build a wall, as you're proposing. At, at, at okay. on the border. So that let me, like you said that we don't have enough money to build a big wall along the border, right? Even if we it's had the cost money. It's going to cost a lot. I was going to ask, if, if, we, we had the even money, if we had the money, would you be in support no, of the wall? No, you want to know why? Because it, the amount of money that it takes to build a wall to shut us in, a much more humanistic approach um, in, in fail, in, 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 in protecting and guarding and safeguarding um, our most vulnerable communities. Uh, would be to in, invest that money into programs that are going to go directly into benefiting their lives. We'll absolutely put food on the table where they need it. We'll make sure that these babies have books when they go to school. Are black um, people oppressed We'll, we'll in ensure America? the fact that they have access to higher education and don't have to live in the same neighborhoods. Um, can make sure that local municipal governments have the money that they need to improve the quality of life in, in, in their... Are black people oppressed in America today? I think, I think black folks have continued to be oppressed. And what, I think that we example. have found ways to thrive um, and we have continued to thrive. Uh, but I do think that, that there are systems in place, the institutionalization of America uh, is in place to oppress and suppress uh, black people. Give so I'm talking example. about the educational in, uh, institution. I'm talking about um, the fact that Flint, Michigan has been without clean water since 2014, since April in 2014. I'm talking about um, the fact that- Who fault is it that, that happened in Flint, Michigan? I'm not here to talk about flaw, I mean, I mean, but, fault, but I think that- And the reason that, I ask because it's black people who have been in control, the government there is black. Again. And, ag and in the urban areas, the government for the most part is is black. Mm -hmm. So are you disappointed in the black Democratic Repub I mean, uh, politicians who are oppressive? I have no black? problem holding my folks accountable where we need to uh, right be held on. accountable. I said a, a few so minutes ago in our conversation, I said a few minutes ago in our conversation that I do not connect skin color with consciousness right. because a black official holds a title. It does not mean to me that they have a proven track record, a demonstrated track That's record right. of service and work in the black community and for people who look like me. Now, rec granted, I did not have a typical upbringing for what you would, what status quo would tell you is the, you know, average uh, life of a black American. But I'm very clear that every time I have the opportunity to open my mouth, particularly on, you know, uh, through mediums like this, that I'm advocating for people who look like me. Right. So I'm, 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 I'm all practicing what it looks like, you know, to have a different personal experience, but also know very clearly and plainly what your obligation is to do. Do you support Black Lives Matter? You heard of them, yes. right? Mm -hmm. You support them? Yes, I do. And why? Uh, be because firstly, um, I think that there are multiple, multiple facets of the resistance movement in large. I think resistance um, and advocacy looks different to different people. Um, and I think that it's our responsibility if you call yourself a member of um, uh, the resistance movement in large, if you call yourself somebody who is, you know, personally and emotionally committed to social justice and advocacy, that you be consistent with that and you support organizations that may be doing, and doing it differently than you, maybe do utilizing they, different methods, but are done? also working towards the, well, I'm extremely proud of the fact that their quick organization and action uh, around um, uh, uh, the uprising in Ferguson, 
their calls for police accountability led directly to the first piece of legislation around body cams in this country where several different municipalities across this country and states uh, you know, took that in, in, into account and implemented legislation for body think cams. Of them, what did you think of them shouting, what do we want, dead cops? When do we want it now? Pigs in the blanket, fry them like bacon. Did you support that? Those I, I don't. I don't know who chanted that. I didn't Black hear Lives that. Black Lives Matter. I didn't hear that. I you didn't never hear that heard it at all. No. How did you not hear it? I didn't. It hear was that all over the media, over and over and over again. What I did see in the media were attempts to attach, um, you know, folks who are who participated in Black Lives Matter marches who may have had alternative sentiments um, to attach those to the larger, more peaceful. Uh, narrative of Black Lives Matter. I did hear that, but I did not hear Black Lives no, Matter people. That's amazing. You're so smart. I'm surprised language. you didn't hear that. Uh, they did chant it, and just assume I'm telling you, take my word on it. They chanted those things. Would you support those type of chants coming from Black Lives Matter? Well, I don't believe that those chants came from Black Lives Matter. But they did. And, and, and if they did, would you, what would you think of that? Well, I don't believe that Black Lives Matter would chant like that. I think that, again, when you call for, when you organize a group of people, you have people who are, who are multifaceted and have nuanced different beliefs that are different than the larger or maybe subbed than the larger. Um, and again, if I heard that, I would vehemently oppose it, uh, but I do not believe Why would that you that oppose it? If you heard Black Lives Matter doing this, wh Be why would you oppose it? <laughs> Be because, I mean, let's, let's call this plain, right? It is, it is in all of our best interests to have positive and supportive relationships yeah. with those who are trusted to uh, keep us safe in this community. Uh, and, and also, you know, I know that Black Lives Matter is not against uh, police and our first responders. They're not. When people gather together for a march and a rally, the rally and, rally and the march is to uphold and affirm the value of the lives of our brothers and sisters. Right. It's not to speak down or against or negative to anybody else. So that would be the first reason why I would oppose it because it's not the time or the place, um, nor is it appropriate to be saying those types of things. Do you believe that white cops are abusive and racist toward black people? I think that's a really blanketed statement. But that's what they believe. Do you believe no, that? No, they don't believe. I don't think it says anywhere in their manifesto that you they must, believe. Are you talking about a different Black Lives Matter group? We're not talking, we're not talking about a different <laughs> Black Lives Matter group. You don't seem to know Matter much group. about them. I, that's very interesting. So the, the Black Lives Matter organization that I know um, is vehemently against um, institutionally supported racism and prejudice and acted out by, uh, by officers. Um, Black Lives Matter that I know is absolutely for um, holding police accountable for their actions and interactions with community members. Um, I, in nowhere have I seen them specifically say um, that this is against white cops. Um, I don't know that to be true. I have not seen that in any kind of written statement. Um, and so I can't defend that because I don't know that, that that's not the truth that I know. Amazing. Black Lives Matter is a radical, far-left, agitative, organization that is built up of lesbians and homosexuals and communist type people. As a Christian, how are you able to support that type of organization? That's, that's, um, I'm really taken aback by your description of that organization. Um, I'll simply say that what I'm most proud about through all of my work, whether it's been contracted work or serving public officials uh, or my own entrepreneurial endeavors, is that everything that I've opened my mouth to support um, has been uh, rooted in equity, well, how, social because justice. Of time, how are you able, as a Christian woman, being a Christian, how are you able to support Black Lives Matter? Uh, knowing <clears throat> that, what I just said about them. Uh, my godfather, Dr. Cornell West, said it perfectly that um, love is what justice looks like in public. Justice is what love looks like in public. And as a Christian woman, um, I will be held to a standard to ask, what did you do for the least of these? You know, how did you earn Are your you keep on this Are you telling me how you're able to support them? This is how, this, this is, is, this is a way that, this is how you can support them as a Christian? This is how I can support you them. You're saying that you love that them? 
Um, excuse me? Are you saying that you love them even though I'm they're saying, I'm radical? Say, I'm saying in love, in love for myself, I don't, I don't attach, let me just have it be very clear that all of the labels that you attach onto Black Lives Matter, Matter the movement, the, the members of the movement that you so outlined um, before, this, before this exchange, um, I don't, I, th that doesn't, is not coherent or um, congruent with how I uh, describe Black Lives Matter. But so you if you're going to ask me how I'm going, how I can support Black Lives Matter, I can tell you how I can support the Black Lives Matter that I know I do support. Because of your love, being a Christian and you love them, that's how you're no, able to support them? You're simplifying my words. Be because of my love for myself, for my culture, right. for people who look like me, for those who are the most vulnerable and marginalized in our communities, because of my love um, so uh, do you for, love, do for you equity love Black and Lives access. Matter? You love Black Lives Matter? I feel like this is getting into... No, 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 I, I want to move on, but I'm not getting times. an answer. I'm trying to get an answer. I'm giving are you, you, I'm giving you, you an appropriate do you answer. Love do you love them? I'm giving an appropriate answer. Okay. Let no, we, we're about to end right now. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. I think mm -hmm. you need to do the last question. Um, you supported the, uh, did you celebrate the International Women's Day? I did. You took part in that? I did. Um, I read on your, you tweeted uh, that you changed your Twitter profile to red for the mm -hmm. International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. Red represents socialism and communism and stuff like that. Why did you change from red to red? Uh, <laughs> that's really, that's a really odd um, line to draw. Um, the organizers of um, the Women's Day March um, created this additional call to action for a day without a woman on International Women's Day. Um, <coughs> you know, red is a, is a color of resistance. Um, it's also one of our nation's um, three pillar colors. Um, red also uh, is, a, is a, you know, sign of strength, of, um, can be a sign of distress. Um, and I think that it was all too fitting um, for us to use red um, to exclaim that we are here, that women should be affirmed and supported um, on every day, not just International Women's Day. And it was, um, I was proud to take part. I still had to work. I wasn't able to abstain from unpaid or paid work. Um, but I did wear <laughs> yeah. my red, and I was proud of that. Uh, normal people don't know what the complaints are. We hear the, the rallies. We hear that people are afraid. But we don't know what they're afraid of or what they are complaining about. Because we have a new administration who has not done anything yet to make them feel whatever they're feeling. What, are the, um, what, are, what do they want? Uh, we don't know what they want. They, they, Trump so you there said normal January. people. You know, the ones who are not wearing the red and protesting and running in those fear. Those are normal people. And living in fear. What are they afraid, what do they want? Well, I guess I'm a part of the non-normal people, so I wouldn't be able to tell you <laughs> what they think uh, okay. or feel. My last question is, um, as a black woman, I've been wondering this for a while. How do black women see black men today? How do you see black men? I, th I think that's a... Uh, question that is extremely heavy and weighted and I don't know if we have the time to unpack it but um, what I what I see constantly when I look at my brothers is strength possibility opportunity hope optimism love um, I see reciprocity um, I see uh, a growing love of self um, and and I'm proud as a black woman to speak that to, yeah. to black men whenever I do see them I am happy you came and, and, and had this conversation. It's been an interesting one. Did you have fun? Yeah, it, fun is a word. <laughs> <laughs> fun is a word. It's a good conversation. I appreciate yeah. it. No, I knew you would have fun with it. Yeah. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you. Had you had a pussy hat, you would have worn it at the Dirty Women Rally. There were nuns, there was a local Catholic parish, there were all sorts of people. But dirty people, yeah. you would have worn a pussy hat in public. I would have worn a pussy hat in public. You're a professor. For the march. Do you think 
Pope Francis would wear a pussy hat? No, I don't think that her Pope Francis so. would wear a pussy hat. Thank you for watching The Fall Estate. If you like the shows, I want you to subscribe here and donate here.